Hey everyone, this tutorial is a definitive video on solving linear equations. Okay, so sometimes these can seem a little bit daunting, but it's actually not too bad because there's actually only two different rules that we have to worry about. Okay, we've got some guidelines as well that I'll talk about, but there's only actually two rules. Okay, and I state the two rules as do the opposite and do it to both slides slash everything. Okay, we'll look at do the opposite first. Okay, so this is talking about our addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay, and what we do is any time we've got something added on, we're going to do the opposite and take it away. Or any time we've got something multiplied, we're going to do the opposite and divide it to get rid of it. Now the idea is that adding and subtracting, we're going to give, like, end up with zero. Multiplying and dividing, we're going to end up with one. Okay, that's important, you'll see a little bit later on. Okay, and do it to both sides slash everything. For adding or subtracting, we've got to do it to both sides. For multiplying or dividing, we've got to do it to everything. Okay, so there are our rules, that's it. Okay, then we've got some guidelines. Okay, so I always say do bod mass backwards. Now you might have a slightly different acronym for bod mass, but um, the idea is that you're going to do addition, subtraction, before multiplication and division. Okay, so these guidelines can be broken, they're not rules. Okay, so you don't have to follow these, but these guidelines will often keep you out of trouble, okay? So it'll mean you don't have to deal with things like fractions or uh, things like negative numbers that can trip us up, okay? So these we have to follow, these we don't, okay? Um, I always recommend to expand brackets and collect like terms. There are some um, times where you might not do that, okay? And again, they're only guidelines, but if you do it all the time, it's going to keep you out of trouble, okay? And when you have the option, always look to avoid negative numbers. Purely because we can all get tripped up on, you know, multiplying two negatives together should be a positive, you know, different things like that, okay, or taking away a negative is the same as adding a number, okay, all those different sorts of things that can trip us up will help be avoided if we just keep an, an eye out for them, okay, and see them coming. So I've got a number of worked examples I want to take you through. Right, so our first worked examples, now these are going to build up in complexity, okay, so we're always going to solve for x, okay, so the first thing to remember is we don't need to get too confused here, okay, we are trying to end up with an answer that is x equals something, now we don't know what that something is, okay, but here's my x and here's my equal sign, okay, that's the x, that's the equal sign, there they are. Okay, so what you're always trying to do is get rid of all the other rubbish around your x. Okay, in this case, we've just got this plus 3. Now, you could probably think in your head, well, what the something plus 3 equals 5, and you'd be able to tell me what it is, but we're going to do the process a bit better than that. Okay, so remember, we're trying to end up with x equals something. Okay, so what we need to do, okay, is get rid of that 3. Now, we're adding 3 on, okay, so my rules are do the opposite. So I need to subtract 3. And we need to do it to both sides. So I've got to take 3 from this side. Okay. My 3 take 3 gives me 0. Which is exactly what we want. Because then there's nothing left on this. So this cancels out to give me 0. So that will only leave me with x on this side. My equal sign. And then 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay. So that's the idea. Now we're going to keep moving on into our other examples. Okay. A little bit more complex now. We've got 2x take 3 equals 7. Okay. So again, here's my x. Here's my equal sign. And the other way to think about it too, another good analogy, is we have a set of scales. Okay. Or a balance. Okay. My equal sign is that balancing point. So if I do something to this side, to keep it balanced, I've got to do the same thing to this side. Okay. That's the other way to think of it in terms of doing it to everything or both sides. Okay, now we said bod mass backwards, that just means we're going to get rid of this minus 3 before this 2. Okay, so we need to do the opposite. So the opposite of taking away 3 is adding on 3. And I've got to do it to both sides, so I'm going to add on 3 as well. Okay, so that's going to cancel out to leave me with 0. So I'm going to have 2x equals 7 plus 3 is 10. Okay, now I've got to get rid of this 2. I'm getting closer. Okay, we've got less stuff on this side now. Okay, we've got to get rid of that 2. At the moment, we're timesing by 2. So, instead, we're going to divide by 2. So, we're going to divide that by 2 and divide that by 2. Now, my 2s are going to cancel out to leave me with 1. Okay, which is what we need. Because 1 times x is simply x. 
Okay, and that's going to equal 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Okay, if we broke our guidelines, what would have happened? Okay, well, we would have been saying instead of getting rid of this 3 first, we would have been getting rid of the 2. Okay, so if we say we're going to now break the guidelines, I'm going to get rid of this 2. That means I've got to divide it by 2. Now remember, it's not just now a matter of dividing this by 2, it's also a matter of dividing that by 2 as well. Okay, because we've got to do it to everything. Now this still cancels out to leave us with um, 1x, or just x, but now we had this take 3 on 2 equals 7 on 2. Okay, now we're taking away 3 on 2, so we need to add on 3 on 2 to both sides. These are going to cancel out to be 0, which is what we want. Okay, but these ones are going to give us, well, 7 on 2 plus 3 on 2 will give us 10 on 2, which is equal to 5. Now, it's exactly what we had over here. Okay, we got the same answer because we haven't broken the rules. Okay, but you can see we had to start dealing with fractions and have more steps because we went away from the guidelines. Okay, so uh, breaking the rules will mean you get the question wrong. Okay, breaking the guidelines will just mean it's more complicated to get there. Right, we'll move on to our next example here. So this time we've got x on 2 plus 2 equals 5. Okay, so this time we won't worry about, we're not going to break the guidelines, we're going to stick to them. Okay, so we want to get rid of this 2 first. Okay, because we do our addition and subtraction first. Okay, so we've got to take 2 away from there as well. 2 take 2 is 0, so they're gone, that's what we want. We've got x on 2 equals, well, 5 minus 2 is 3. Okay. Now I have x divided by 2, so I now need to times it by 2. If I times this side by 2, I've got to times this side by 2. These 2's will cancel out to give me 1, which is what we want, because it'll be 1x, which is just x, equals 3 times 2 is our 6. Okay, so again, here's my x, here's my equal sign, okay, I've now got them all together at equal 6. Okay, now our next one here, okay, is... 3 outside of x plus 1 equals 12. Okay, so again, we're not going to go uh, off our guidelines. Now, this one, uh, if you're savvy, you could see we could actually get rid of this and it's not going to cause us trouble. Okay, but we're going to stick with our guideline, which tells us to expand our brackets and collect like terms. Okay, so we're going to expand by multiplying these ones together. So we have 3 times x gives us 3x, okay, and 3 times 1 gives us 3 equaling 12. Okay, now we can just take care of it like we did this one over here. So we've got adding 3, so we need to take it away and do it to both sides. We've got 3x equaling, well 12 minus 3 is 9. Okay, then we can divide by 3 because we were times in. Divide by 3 because we've got to do it to both sides. My 3s will cancel out to give me 1. To leave me with x equaling 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, uh, now this one we could have just divided by 3 in the first place. Okay. So we've got 3 times all this, so we, we could have gone divide by 3 from the word go. So they would cancel out to give them 1, and then we would have had x plus 1 equaling well, 12 on 3 is 4. Take away my 1, x equals 3. You might say, well, this is a fair bit simpler, okay? Uh, why, did, why do you say to expand the brackets and collect like terms? Well, this could have worked nicely for this one because it's still a reasonably simple one. You'll see some later on where it gets a bit more complex, uh, complicated. So we want to go with this way because it's going to probably keep us out of trouble more times than not. But again, it's a guideline. It's not a rule. So you could have gone this way instead. Okay, now I've got some more worked examples I want to look at. So you see, we're starting to get a bit more complex here. Okay, so we're saying solve for x. So we've got minus 2 outside of x take 3 plus 4 equals 2. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is expand our brackets and collect the like terms first. So we're going to multiply through here and multiply through there. So minus 2 times x will give us minus 2x. And minus 2 times minus 3 or negative 2 times negative 3 will give us positive 6. Okay. Plus 4 equals 2. Then we've got to collect our like terms. Our like terms are our 6 and 4 on this side. So minus 2 
uh, minus 2x, sorry, plus 10 equals 2. Okay. Now we can start to get things out of the way away from this x. So we can subtract our 10 and subtract our 10. So minus 2x equals, well, uh, 2 take 10 is minus 8. Okay. Now we can, now this one, don't get confused. Just because it's a negative 2, we're not going to add on 2 because it's negative 2 times x. So you've got to divide by negative 2 and divide by negative 2. That one is one that trips up students a lot, okay, thinking they've got uh, minus 2x here, so I've got to add on 2. Now I've got to divide by 2. Okay, so that's going to cancel that to leave 1. It's going to be x equals, well, negative 8 on negative 2 is 4. Okay, so we're getting there. Hey, our next worked example is a little bit more complex because now we don't just have an x on one side of our equation, we have it on both sides of our equation. Okay, so we'll go look at how we can deal with this. Okay. Uh, now, we still need to end up with x equaling something. So what that means is all my x's have to be on one side of the equation. Now, this is a case where we want to look and see, well, which way will mean I'm going to stick with positive numbers. Okay, so... Here, I've got positive 2x and positive x. Okay, so to get rid of one from one side, okay, I'd either have to go minus 2x from this side and take it away from this side, or I could take my x away from this side and from this side. Okay, now you'll, you'll see if we do that, that second option, then we're going to steer clear of our negatives, which is what we'll do. So we'll go take x from this side and take x from this side. So we go, well, I've got two lots of x, take x is going to leave me with x. I've still got my plus 3, and that equals, now this x is gone. Because I had an x, so I took it away. So it's gone, right, leaving me with minus 1. Okay. Now we can simply go, I'll take 3, and I'll take 3. That'll leave me with, well, they cancel out. Minus 1, take 3, is minus 4. Okay. So again... If we'd gone the other way, it wouldn't have mattered too much, okay, because it's only a guideline, okay, so if we'd gone 2x plus 3 equals x, take 1, and taken away 2x here, 2x there, okay, well, this time they're gone, and I say 3 equals, well, x, take 2x, you're going to leave me with negative x, take 1, okay, I've got to add my 1 on, Okay, which is going to give me 4 equals negative x. Okay, and now I would need to either multiply or divide by negative 1. Let's go divide by negative 1. And my negatives would cancel out, but I've got to do it over here as well. Now, 4 divided by negative 1 is simply negative 4. So x would equal negative 4, which is what I had. Okay, but you can see we start to have to deal with negatives more. Okay, that's where our guideline, okay, or trying to avoid the negatives, it's a good idea. So really, what that comes down to is most of the time, okay, um, taking away the smaller one from the bigger one. Okay, that's more or less what happens. Okay, we're going to keep moving on. Okay, so we're getting a little bit more complicated here now. Okay, so we've got 2x take 6 on 4, equaling x plus 1. Okay, so for this one, um, again, we're going to actually be breaking our guidelines a little bit because we're not going to be doing bond mass backwards and getting rid of this one first. Because what our problem really is, is our 4. We really need to get rid of that first. So this side is divided by 4. So I'm going to times this side by 4. That means I'm going to times this side by 4. So they're going to cancel out. Okay, leaving me with 1. Okay, and 1 times this stuff up here is just that same stuff. It's not going to change. Okay, now I've got x plus 1 times 4. Okay, so I've got to expand that out. So I'm going to multiply through. So 4 times x gives me 4x. 4 times 1 gives me 4. Okay, so now I've got to look at collecting my like terms. Okay, so we can see here that we've got 2x and 4x. Okay, it makes sense to take my 2x away from both sides because just like our last example, means we're going to stick with our positives. So I'm going to be left with negative 6 on this side okay, because they're cancelling out. 4x take 2x will leave me with 2x, okay, plus 4. Okay, right, now I'm going to get rid of this 4 now, okay, because it's a bit more of a standard equation now, so I'm going to take it away from both sides. So minus 6 take 4 is going to leave me with minus 10. Okay, they're cancelling out to 0, and I'm left with 2x on this side. 
Now I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. Okay, which is negative 10 on 5, oh, sorry, negative 10 on 2 will leave me with negative 5 equals, well, my 2's are gone, my x. Now, basically, we're finished there, but we always just write it as x equals negative 5. Okay, just by convention. All right, we're moving on to uh, D this time. Okay, it's a bit more complicated here. Okay, this is going to be drawing on some of our work that we've done previously. Okay, so this time, right, we've got here uh, two algebraic fractions, okay, that we need to add together so that we can solve um, our overall equation. So, what we need to do is get our common denominator. Now, remember, we can get that simply by uh, multi sorry, multiplying those together, okay. So, if I am going to multiply the 5 by my 2, then I'm going to multiply my 3x by 2. Now, 3x times 2 is 6x, okay, uh, and that'll be on 10, plus, now if I've got to times my 2 by 5 to get 10, which means I've got to times this top line by 5. I remember, best to put in brackets, okay, so we don't accidentally muck it up, okay. Now, we can actually get uh, put these together and say we've got 6x plus 5 outside of x plus 1, on 10, equaling 4. Okay, so we're getting there now. Now we may as well get rid of this 10, we don't like it there. Okay, now we're dividing by 10, so to get rid of it, we're going to times by 10, and times by 10. Let's go leaving with 6x plus 5 outside of x plus 1, equaling 40. Okay, so again to something that looks a little bit nicer now. And we need to expand out these brackets. Okay, so we have 6x plus well, 5 times x is 5x, 5 times 1 is 5, equaling 40. Okay, collect like terms, where well, we have 6x and 5 plus 5x, well, that will give us 11x plus 5 equals 40. I'm going to come up here for the rest of my working out, okay, because I'm going to take 5 away and take 5 away, to leave me with 11x equaling 40 take 5 is 35, okay, and I need to get rid of my 11, I'm going to divide both sides by 11, okay, because it's going to cancel out on this, which will leave me with x equals 35 on 11, okay, now I'm not going to worry about simplifying that at all, okay, um, all the answers so far have been nice whole numbers, but in reality, most of the time we're going to end up with numbers that aren't necessarily whole numbers. Textbooks are really poor though, to only make out questions like I've done previously, we end up with nice whole numbers. In the real world, when we start applying this, we're not going to end up with whole numbers the vast majority of the time. Okay, so I've just got two more ones I want to have a look at. Okay, so getting a little bit more complicated again. Okay, we have 3x plus 3 outside of x take 5 on 2 equals 7. Okay, so what we need to do here, okay, is actually multiply by our 2 first to get rid of it. Okay, now that means I'm going to multiply this by 2 and that by 2. Because remember, it's do it to everything. Okay, so 3x times 2 is going to give me 6x. Okay, now my 2 is going to cancel out to leave me with 3 outside of x minus 5. Equaling 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, now I need to expand out these brackets. So we're going to have 6x. 3 times x gives us 3x. Three time, positive 3 times uh, negative 5 will give me negative 15. Equals 14. Okay, 6x plus 3x will give me 9x. Okay, minus 15 equals 14. I need to add on 15 to both sides. So 9x equaling 14 plus 15 is 29. Divide both sides by 9. It will leave me with x equals 29 on 9. Again, I'm not going to simplify that any further. Okay, if it was a fraction that simplified, like simplified, but I'm not going to be worried about turning this into a mixed number or anything. Okay, got one last example here, and this one's just to show you that really, even though this is getting a lot more complicated, it's really actually no different to any of the others. We stick with our rules and we're going to get our answer. Okay? So, here, what we need to do is actually multiply out 
both of our sets of brackets. Okay, so I'm going to do that all in one step. So we have 2 times x is 2x. Positive 2 times negative 4 will give me negative 8. Plus my 5x that I had here equals 3 times x is 3x. Positive 3 times negative 2 will give me negative 6. Okay, plus 4. Okay, so now I'm going to collect like terms on both sides of my equation. So I've got 2x plus 5x will give me 7x minus my 8 equals 3x or minus 6 plus 4 will give me minus 2. Okay, so now we're getting there slowly. Now we have a look. Well, if I take my 7x off my 3x, I'm going to end up with a negative because this one's bigger. So I'm going to take my 3x away from both sides. 7x minus 3x will leave me with 4x. Okay, I've still got my minus 8 on this side. Okay, that's gone, so I'm left with my minus 2 on this side. Okay, my 4x. Okay, I'm going to sorry, I'm going to add on my 8 sorry, to both sides. So I have 4x equaling, because they're going to cancel out. Minus 2 plus 8 is 6. Right, so I'll have x equals 6 on 4. I'm going to divide both sides by 4. x is going to equal 3 on 2, because we can simplify that fraction. Okay. So, if we just recap a little bit, okay, I'm going to go flip back to my very first one that we're looking at. Okay, so here we have our rules and our guidelines. So it's got a little smudged here. Okay, but remember, our rules are do the opposite. Okay, and do it to both sides slash everything. Okay, they're the rules. Can't break those. These are some guidelines, and we've done a fair few examples of different ways of these guidelines. These can be broken, but they can um, help you out uh, to keep things simple. So hopefully that's enough uh, to get you uh, a little bit more confident with doing these type of questions. Okay, so hopefully that'll be enough to get you through.